Last night's operations commenced with a high-stakes aerial strike against a significant Russian intelligence target. At approximately 3.45 a.m. local time, a lone Ukrainian Air Force MiG-29 fighter jet was positioned on a runway in the Pava Oblast. This activity followed a period of relative operational calm in this sector. Russian forces had reportedly been observed shifting focus, redeploying assets east of Kefe. While military analysts assessed that Ukrainian forces were likely preparing for an operation, the nature and timing of this specific mission were not anticipated. The operation was reportedly planned not from a primary command headquarters, but from a smaller forward command post, suggesting a high-priority, unconventional mission profile. The designated target was unconventional. The Federal Security Service, or FSB, headquarters in Glowovo Belgorod Oblast just 3.1 miles from the Ukrainian border. This was a high-value, high-risk facility, previously deemed untouchable due to its heavy defenses and political sensitivity. Striking this core intelligence apparatus marked a significant escalation. The mission profile itself was exceptionally hazardous, requiring the pilot to fly nearly 60 miles at a treetop altitude of only 165 feet to bypass the detection envelope of Russian S-400 radar systems. The terminal phase of the attack required a sudden, near-vertical climb to an altitude of 16,400 feet. This maneuver was essential to achieve the correct release parameters for the munitions before Russian air defenses could acquire and engage the aircraft. The entire engagement window, from climb to release, was estimated to be under seven minutes. The operation's central challenge was technological. The MiG-29 Fulcrum, a fourth-generation Soviet-era fighter, was not natively designed to interface with modern NATO standard munitions. The aircraft was armed with two French-made ASM Hammer Precision Guided bombs, each weighing over 550 pounds. To integrate these systems, Ukrainian engineers reportedly field-modified the aircraft. This involved fabricating custom pylons, fitting external GPS antennas to the fuselage, and installing a non-standard cockpit interface, described as a tablet running custom software. This improvised system was designed to translate modern GPS coordinates into a format the MiG-29's legacy avionics could process, enabling the pilot to target the ASM munitions. After takeoff, the MiG-29 descended to its operational altitude of 100 65 feet above ground level. The pilot navigated a pre-planned terrain masking route, using landscape features to remain concealed from detection. This low-altitude approach was the critical element of the ingress phase. While Russian S-400 batteries in the region possess a nominal detection range of up to 250 miles, their effectiveness is limited by the radar horizon. At an altitude of 165 feet, the aircraft would only become visible to ground-based radar at a distance of approximately 15.5 miles, drastically reducing the available reaction time for Russian air defense crews. The pilot was effectively using the Earth's curvature as a shield. The most vulnerable point of the mission would be the final pop-up maneuver, where the aircraft would intentionally expose itself to radar to execute the bomb release. At 04.22 a.m., Approximately 3.7 miles from the target, the MiG-29 reached its pre-calculated initial point and commenced the attack maneuver. The pilot executed a sharp 45-degree climb, rapidly gaining altitude. As predicted, the aircraft was immediately detected by Russian air defense networks. Warning systems indicated locks from 92N6 Gravestone fire control radars, which began providing targeting solutions to S-400 batteries in the Belgorod and Kursk regions. The pilot operated within an estimated 20-second window. Upon reaching the optimal release parameters at 16,400 feet, the two AASM hammer bombs were released. The munitions activated their internal guidance and rocket boosters. Immediately following release, the pilot executed a high-G defensive maneuver, rolling the aircraft and diving back towards the low-altitude sanctuary of the terrain. This allowed the MiG-29 to break the radar lock and evade the inbound interceptors. Russian forces launched 48N6 interceptor missiles, but due to the speed of the Ukrainian maneuver, the missiles failed to acquire and destroy the target. The MiG successfully egressed the area, flying back below the radar horizon. 
As the MiG-29 departed, the two AASM hammer munitions proceeded autonomously toward the target. These 550-pound bombs are equipped with a solid-fuel rocket booster, extending their range and allowing for complex flight paths at speeds approaching Mach 0.8. Their guidance is managed by a triple-redundant system, combining inertial navigation, GPS, and a backup logic system. This design is specifically intended to counter electronic warfare, particularly the GPS denial environments commonly employed by Russian forces. Even if the GPS link is severed, the INS is capable of guiding the bomb to within an estimated 30 feet of its target. The munitions control fins make hundreds of micro-adjustments per second, correcting for atmospheric conditions. For the terminal phase, the bombs were programmed for a near-vertical dive, and their fuses were set with a slight delay. This configuration utilizes a shaped charge warhead designed for maximum penetration of hardened structures before detonation. At 04.27 am, the munitions impacted the target. The two bombs struck approximately 23 seconds apart, diving at a terminal velocity of over 820 feet per second. The first bomb hit the central roof of the FSB headquarters. Its delayed fuse, set for 0.025 seconds, allowed it to penetrate two floors before detonating. The second bomb impacted the west wing moments later, targeting a primary load-bearing section. The sequenced impacts resulted in a progressive structural failure. Within seconds, the five-story fortified building collapsed. Ukrainian sources claimed over 40 FSB officers, analysts, and technical staff were killed in the strike. The attack is assessed to have destroyed secure archives, communication hubs, and critical server infrastructure. This operation represents a significant strategic and symbolic success for Ukraine. It demonstrated a new capability. Tactically, it neutralized a key Russian intelligence and command and control node. Strategically, it served to demonstrate that high-value assets within Russia, even those belonging to the internal security services, are no longer invulnerable to Ukrainian air power. In a separate reported engagement, tensions escalated on the Poland-Kaliningrad border. At 11.32pm yesterday, Polish air defense crews monitoring the frontier detected a multi-vector attack originating from Russian territory. The assault was described as a multi-domain operation. It involved Orlan 30 reconnaissance drones, ground-based unmanned vehicles, and Kaliber cruise missiles launched from within the Kaliningrad enclave, approximately 60 miles from the border. The assessed objective of the strike was to target Polish fuel depots and ammunition storage sites near the border, aiming to disrupt a key NATO logistical lifeline in the Baltic region. Polish forces initiated an immediate, coordinated counter-response. Within three minutes of the initial alert, F-16C fighters were scrambled, climbing to 25,000 feet. They successfully engaged the inbound Kaliber cruise missiles, reported to be traveling at nearly 550 miles per hour, with AIM-120 AMRAAM missiles. Simultaneously, ground assets were activated. War 40 Langusta and HIMARS multiple launch rocket systems, or MRLS, fired from concealed positions, guided by real-time data from reconnaissance drones, armored units, including Leopard 2A5 main battle tanks, and Rosamac infantry fighting vehicles, or IFVs, moved to forward blocking positions. Polish electronic warfare units concurrently engaged, jamming Russian drone guidance frequencies and command links. By the 10-minute mark, this integrated air, ground, and cyber defense had reportedly neutralized the majority of the initial Russian missile wave, establishing a hardened defensive zone. The counter-strike then transitioned into an offensive operation. At 04.58 am, just before sunrise, paired Polish Su-22 and F-16C strike aircraft took off from forward bases. Their objective was to suppress and degrade the Russian air defense network in Kaliningrad. The strike was preceded by low observable stealth drones and robotic ground decoys. These assets were deployed to mimic the radar signatures of larger aircraft and armored columns, successfully baiting Russian S-400 Triumph batteries into activating their radars and expending missiles on false targets. 
With the Russian air defense network lit up and distracted, Polish F-16Cs executed a strike, diving from 25,000 feet to release JDAM precision bombs and anti-radiation missiles against the identified radar masts and command bunkers. Concurrently, mobile HIMARS units launched guided rockets to crater Kaliningrad's primary runways, effectively trapping Russian MiG-31 and Su-35 interceptors on the ground. By 05.30 a.m., the operation had shifted from defense to a full-spectrum offensive, significantly degrading the Russian S-400 grid. Following the air offensive, Polish ground forces advanced at 06.10 a.m. The maneuver began with robotic systems securing the terrain. Unmanned mine-laying vehicles deployed TM-62 anti-tank mines along known infiltration routes. These were supported by quadrupedal combat robots, equipped with sensor packs and 7.62mm turrets, which patrolled the undergrowth to detect and engage any remaining Russian reconnaissance squads. Rosomak IFVs advanced behind this robotic screen, masked by smoke drones. A key element of this phase was counter-battery fire. Mobile radars with a detection range of 25 miles scanned for Russian mortar or rocket launches. Any detected hostile fire was met with precision 155mm artillery shells within two minutes, silencing the enemy positions. By 06.45 a.m., Polish forces had established a three-dimensional trap, denying Russian forces ground maneuverability. At 07.15 a.m., with Russian reconnaissance teams neutralized, Poland initiated a special operations raid. Teams utilizing silent, electric all-terrain vehicles, guided by AI-driven reconnaissance scouts, infiltrated 12 miles behind the border. At 07.40 a.m., these units breached a Russian electronic command post. They planted and detonated specialized EMP devices, which emitted a powerful electromagnetic pulse designed to destroy sensitive electronics. This action reportedly severed Russian drone control uplinks, causing all an observation drones to fail. With the command post's electronics fried, its coordinates were relayed to artillery units. Within five minutes, HIMARS and Langusta batteries, supported by 155mm howitzers, saturated the location. Leopard 2 A5 tanks and Rosomak IFVs then advanced to secure the area. By 08.10 a.m., the Russian command and control node was completely destroyed. At 08.30 a.m., Polish forces shifted to full area control. Robotic engineering units deployed 40-foot aluminum pontoon bridges, allowing Leopard 2 A5 tanks and Rosomak IFVs to secure key junctions, all under the air cover of F-16Cs, orbiting at 28,000 feet. Combat rescue teams established humanitarian corridors to process wounded or surrendering Russian soldiers. By 1100 AM, the operation entered its final phase. Long-range HIMARS and Langusta batteries launched salvos at targets 40 miles deep, striking ammunition parks near Chernyakovsk. Simultaneously, Polish cyber units reportedly breached Kaliningrad's rail control servers, paralyzing logistical transport from mainland Russia. By early afternoon, this multi-domain operation had reportedly neutralized Kaliningrad's forward strike network. The coordinated use of air power, decoys, special forces, armor, and cyber attacks isolated the Russian enclave, severed its command and control, and degraded its logistical capacity for an immediate counteroffensive. In yet another distinct operation reported yesterday, Ukrainian forces allegedly targeted the general staff of the armed forces facility in Moscow. This attack appeared to be the culmination of a larger operation. At approximately 04.41 a.m., the main strike occurred. Two munitions, identified in reports as Flamingo cruise missiles, were employed. These missiles reportedly approached the target at an extremely low altitude of 70 feet, evading citywide air defenses. The first missile, equipped with a delayed fuse warhead, reportedly struck the facility's command bunker, targeting its primary energy infrastructure. The second missile impacted moments later, targeting the main fiber optic communications hub, with the objective of severing the high command's link to field units. Subsequent reports claimed that computer screens within the facility went blank, 
and radio channels fell silent. Ground units, including T-72 tanks and infantry, were then reported to be securing the perimeter of the compound. This ambitious operation was claimed to have successfully targeted Russia's central military command structure. By neutralizing the general staff's ability to communicate, the strike allegedly aimed to sever Moscow's capacity to coordinate multi-front operations. As in other operations, Ukrainian commanders reportedly established humanitarian corridors for wounded personnel, signaling an objective focused on infrastructure and command.